everyone and welcome to touch base thursday for march 25th i have lots of cuteness to share with you tonight so i'm just going to give this a moment for all of you to find me live and then we will get started here in about two minutes um those of you that might be new to finding me on facebook i'm um, welcome my name is kim vogel and i am a stampin up demonstrator from mount pleasant michigan and i'll be sharing some cute easter projects with you tonight so just going to give this a moment for some of you to find me um hi to sonia and philomena um hi ladies and welcome um so uh, again, tonight's going to be all about um, Easter projects and sharing some really cute things with an awesome stamp set. So can't wait to share them with you. Um, make sure you comment and tell me hello as you're joining me. If you are watching on replay, please go ahead and comment um, replay and um, make sure you share my video because um, I anybody who shares my video through um, the week gets put into the drawing to receive um, free goodies. Um, hi to Donna and Janet. Jam, Donna, I hope that you're getting lots done on your little getaway. Um, Janie, hello. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I see we've got a good number of you on here already. First of all, does anyone notice my new hair? Um, so I got it um, low lighted instead of highlighted, and so I went darker. Um, it matches more of my normal color now. So um, anyway, if you're wondering, oh my gosh, she looks different. Yep, my hair is darker. Um, so I'm really excited about it. I really like it. Um, I think it was just time to kind of uh, do something different. So anyway, um, next week is our school spring break week. However, I will still be going live with you. Um, I will be taking a couple days at the beginning of the week um, to go and visit with my mom for a couple days. Um, but I'll be back in time for our Thursday um, Facebook Live. So I'll still be live with you all. Um, so uh, don't fear on that front. Um, you'll still be able to, um, to um, have, see me next week. Um, hi to Susie and Debbie. Um, hi, ladies. So a um, uh, couple things. Um, as you know, if you share my video, you get put into the drawing to receive goodies. And so I have two winners from last week. Um, I had the opal rounds, and then I also had the metallic pearls. So the winner of the metallic pearls is Philomena Soso. So congratulations to Philomena. And then the winner of the um, opal um, rounds is Paula Avion. And I'm hoping I'm spelling or saying your name right, Paula. I don't think I have your address, Paula, so if you could message it to me, that would be great, and I'll get that in the mail. Philomena, I know I have your address because you have one on my Facebook Lives before. So thank you for continuing to watch and continuing to share. Um, up for grabs this week are a couple of um, embellishments that are going to be retiring. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the retiring list in just a couple of minutes. Um, but we have the Butterfly Gems. Um, my last pack of the Butterfly Gems, it's the outgoing in colors. And then a package of the current, the in colors that came out last year. These will carry over for one more year. This is the 20 to 22 in colors. And these are the little enamel dots. So those are the two that we will give away next week. Um, and thank you, Shireen. I'm glad that you like my hair. It's, um, yeah, I just got it done on Monday. So I haven't had a lot of time to do much with it yet. But um, I do like it as well. Uh, so, like I mentioned, I'll be gone the beginning of next week. Um, I'm still available via email, things like that, but I will be gone on Monday and Tuesday. Um, and then I wanted to let you guys know that the retiring list of products from our Stampin' Up! annual catalog, I posted a blog post on my Facebook group just last, um, or on, it was just yesterday, I do believe, with all of the products that are retiring. And so there are some pretty good ones retiring. Um, some of the sad ones for me are they are retiring the oval, layering ovals, layering squares, these stitched shapes, and then all of the circle punches. Boo-hoo, I'm sad. But we still have the layering circles, so we can still do um, lots of awesome things with um, with the, the stuff. And I will tell you that I'm sure there's going to be, well, I know there is going to be, because as a demonstrator, we got to see the new catalog online yesterday. And there are awesome things coming out that will be keeping us creating for a long, long time. So um, anyway, see, Paula, I see you're on here. So Paula, you were a winner um, for sharing last Last week so I'm not sure if I have your mailing address so if you could please message it to me a private message that would be great um, and I'll get you your prize you won the opal rounds in case you um, joined a little bit late okay 
So um, let's see what else I've got going on. So some of the classes that I currently have going on. Oh, Courtney, you like those butterflies. <laughs> um, I currently have opened my um, April Zoom class. My April Zoom class is the Sand and Sea. They're beautiful cards that will take place on April 24th. It is a Saturday from 10 until noon. If you want the class but you're not able to attend the live Zoom, I can send you the recording after the class and you'll be able to still put those cards together. Um, my bingo for April is open, online bingo. Um, that is open um, April, um, or that is open and the event is April 21st. Um, I'm also going to be planning and scheduling uh, what I'm calling a retirement party. So it'll be a retirement virtual party. I've done them on Facebook before, but I haven't done one in a while. So I'm going to be getting one of those on the calendar um, probably shortly after after Easter. I was going to try to squeeze one in next week, but I just don't have enough time to be able to do that with um, spring break and everything else we have going on here in the basement. Um, the sympathy card class is still open. Um, and then all of my April classes will be opening in the next week. Um, all of March kits are shipping. Um, most of them shipped yesterday. The rest are shipping today. That includes um, my scrapbook layouts and my card classes. And something new that I'm going to be offering um, is all of my scrapbook layouts I'm going to start offering as an online class. Um, actually, where, where you can actually purchase it no matter where you live. Right now, it's kind of limited to people who can come or I really haven't promoted it a lot as a class that anybody can um, purchase. But I've had a couple of requests for people asking me if my scrapbook layouts that I do are a class that they can register for. Um, I've never really opened it up with an online link and I'm here to tell you that I'm going to start doing that beginning next month. Okay, so if any of you are into scrapbooking, you'll have an option to purchase um, some layouts that, um, so a little bit of my history, I started um, paper crafting by being, scrapbooking is where I started. So um, I've gotten pretty creative with using Stampin' Up! products to be able to scrapbook with them. And then I got into the card making once I became a demonstrator and started using the products and things. And so um, just so you guys know, that you have an option um, to be able to do that. Oh, thank you, Terry. Um, although sometimes I feel my hair doesn't look as cute as it should when I just throw it up. And anyway, trying to do better and look presentable on my Thursday nights for you guys. Okay, um, so I'm going to, I think that's all I had in the way of announcements. Not a ton. Um, most of my, um, if you have not joined my mailing list yet, uh, make sure you do. Um, if you go to my website at kimsbasementbunch.com, um, and I'll also post the link to join uh, my mailing list in the description of my video after I'm done but you can um, go out there and join my mailing list you'll get emailed all of my classes for you to be able to register for if you're interested in classes um, and all I do a Tuesday newsletter and a Friday free tutorial email so um, twice a week you get emails from me and then you also get emails for my classes and stuff so if it's something you're interested in make sure you join my mailing list because that's where all of that happens I post a lot here in my group and my Facebook page as well um, okay, so tonight, what I'm sharing with you guys tonight is the awesome Springtime Joy stamp set. This is probably one of my favorite spring Easter stamp sets that I've played with in quite some time. Um, I really like the one they had a couple years ago. It had a bunny in it, and uh, I forget what else. But this one, I think, has topped it. I really like this one. This stamp set is only $20, the best $20 you'll ever spend, especially after you see the projects that we are going to create with that. Um, now, I do have an ordering promotion for anybody who puts in a minimum $30 order from now through Sunday night. You will receive in the mail um, uh, five free Easter cards um, for you to um, assemble. Um, or maybe I might even surprise you and assemble them for you. But anyway, it's going to be five Easter cards. Um, four of them you're going to be seeing featured here tonight with a few other 3D projects. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and transition my camera down. Um, again, my website is kimsbasementbunch.com. There's a host code right there. I make it very simple. Um, all the links will be posted in the description of my video following my Facebook Live or at the latest by tomorrow morning, okay? So with that, I'm going to transition my camera down, and I'm going to share with you guys some really awesome and cute projects using that fun stamp set. Okay, so one moment while I get myself set up here. I'm going to have to plug my external speaker, because at that point I don't need it no anymore. 
All right, you guys, check out that awesome little lamb with the bow in his hair, or her hair. Isn't that cute? Okay, so there's your little sneak peek of all the projects before I sweep them all out of the way. Um, and then we're going to kind of go through them um, a couple at a time, or one at a time, I should say, and put some of these projects together. So all of my 3D projects that I focused on tonight had to do with packaging of um, things from the Stampin' Up! catalog. So it's nothing that you have to, um, it's nothing that you have to uh, design as far as, you know, cutting or anything like that. It's all things that you just put together that come already kind of assembled. Um, Terry, my, um, my bingo make and takes are going to be focused on, I have to think about it, I think it's butterflies the month of April. We're using the new butterfly brilliance stuff. So that will be what the um, cards um, are involved in, um, in use. And then I just have um, different bundles that I use for my prizes. Okay, so I'm going to share with you first this awesome, fun, cute little, little box. Um, now this is just some candy that my friend Kay picked up for me because I never made it to the store. So thanks, Kay. I know you're watching. Um, I told her I needed some candy for my projects. And what she didn't even know this, but look how awesome it matches. So she bought blue candy and it matches my paper. Now this paper is from the Hydrangea Hill, um, the Hydrangea Hill Designer Series paper. And all I did was, um, if you haven't seen these boxes yet, let me pull this one in. So I'm going to start with this quick and simple 3D project. So these are the little boxes that Stampin' Up! sells. Now these are retiring. So if you really, really, really like these boxes, which I do because I use them for so many little um, gifts for my different online retreats and events for little um, projects to give out. I encourage you to order them sooner than later because all of the retiring products are only available while supplies last, okay? So you're going to want to make sure um, that you get your favorite products before they are gone, 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 okay? Um, so, um, so yeah, um, this is one of the ones that I think is just so, so cute. And you literally, you just put the box together. So you put the two little ends in first, then this just kind of goes up and in there like that and then this gets folded in and this has been one of my favorite things that I have been using so um, you know I, I can't wait to play with the new um, packaging but for right now I'm showcasing what is leaving because you know I love it so this paper is two by six and then I've scored it at two inches and then again at four inches. So that way you have it, it, it by scoring it, it just kind of helps it lay flatter across this box. And then I'm going to use some glue dots and I don't like to put the paper where the box opens. So I'm going to put the paper around the other way and all I do is put a couple of glue dots on each end of this. I mean, this is all you need for adhesive, so simple. So hi to Pam, I see Pam just joined us from, oh, from North Carolina. How awesome, thank you for joining me. All right, and then I'm just gonna wrap that around like that. Now this is also one of the punches that's leaving. This is a two inch circle punch. So if you want to get your hands on a two inch circle punch, I would suggest uh, not waiting too much longer. So any of the retiring products, like I said, if you go to my website, there is a link to the um, to view the products um, in, a, in a PDF document. If you'd rather look at them online, you can just go to, the, to stampinup.com. There's a spot where it says retiring products and you can just look at them all right online as well. So I put that on with a few dimensionals. And then in advance, just to save me a little bit of time, I have a bunny here. Now what I did do is I colored the bunny with some of my Stampin' Blends. And here's where you can get creative, but I chose to use some of the colors that were in the designer series paper. And like I said, the candy of choice in here is these awesome Dove candies. And I did eat one and they are really, really good. And I think it's neat that they match the paper because the paper has that color in it as well. So good job. Kay had no idea that she was matching that up when she bought that. I went to put that in and I was like, oh my gosh, it matches. So I'm just going to color the little flowers. I really love the little flowers here on these little, like, little headbands on both the lamb and the little, um, the little bunny. 
So this would be great. You could also use the stamp set for, um, you know, welcome spring. You could also use the stamp set for baby. So you got a lot of versatility of what you can all do with the stamp set. It doesn't just have to be used for Easter. So I do think that you have a little bit of, of other things that you can do with it. And then I did color the ears pink. So let me find my... I'll use my dark petal pink. I think I used the light, but we'll make them darker. And then there are no dyes for this stamp set, unfortunately. So I did fussy cut this. And I'm, oh, and I forgot that I also added a little bit of the gray to him. So all I did was take the, this is the smoky slate. And I just kind of highlighted around some of the um, marks on it. Nothing fancy here. Just kind of went around a little bit to add a little bit of dimension to the little bunny and then I just fussy cut that using um, paper snips and uh, like I said there are no dies for this but this goes really really fast um, doesn't take long at all uh, here we go and if you guys heard that noise not too long ago I'm gonna blame it on my husband he was digging in the freezer I'm assuming to find something for him to make for dinner. So I was like, what is that noise? It's getting kind of loud down here. And I turned around and he is digging through the freezer. So um, anyway, sometimes he fends for himself if he doesn't like the things that I've made for dinner. And um, he is more of like a steak person and I'm more of like a chicken and a casserole kind of person. So there are times that when he wants steak, he'll just make his own. So he just got in um, from working for the day. So anyway, I apologize if it got a little noisy there because I was like, what is that noise? Okay, and then this I just went ahead and adhered directly on using some um, stamp and seal. I'm just gonna put a little bit on there and there you have a cute little project. So like I said, this is really a great one to do for, um, you know, did I put that on there? No, I didn't. I did good. Okay. I thought I put it on there the wrong way, but it doesn't really matter. But this is a really quick and simple one um, for doing. Um, yes. So Courtney, you noticed that I am left-handed, but I cut right-handed. I do. So true story. I write left-handed. I eat right-handed. I I do. I'm totally messed up. I'm telling you, I'm totally messed up. Uh, that's why I struggle doing certain things and I have to change it to whatever feels comfortable for me. Um, so I'm left-handed, but I do a few things right-handed as well. So um, yeah, totally crazy. Anyway, I hope you like that cute little project. So the next one I'm going to share with you, I think is one of my favorite projects. And these pizza boxes are going away and I about cried. I actually bought 10 packs of these pizza boxes because I use them so, so much in my um, business for sending little um, treats and things like that. And um, so I don't know if, if you guys have been seeing much of this on Facebook, um, but I have seen a lot of pictures of like newborn babies with these great big bows on their head. And that was the inspiration that I got to create this cute little lamb. Of course, I had to use pink because I like pink and I used the magenta so that it would be nice and bright. Um, but this little box has, again, thanks to Kay, some little hubba bubba bubble tape bubble gum in here. How perfect is that for giving it to like, a you know, a grandson, granddaughter, niece, nephew, um, it's designed perfect for, you know, a younger child. Um, and obviously this looks kind of, kind of girlish with the little bow in its hair, but isn't that cute? And so um, what I used for the designer series paper, again, if you haven't seen these, these mini paper pumpkin bag or these mini um, pizza boxes, they also fit really nice, like some cookies, like the, I bought a couple of the, the a package of the they're called the grandma's cookies. It fits two cookies to a package and it fits perfect in here. Um, and we've been giving those out to some of the people um, that have done different things for us. And I had a lady that wanted a few of those made. But this box is so sturdy and so awesome for so many things. So what I did is I cut a piece of three and a quarter by three and a quarter cardstock. Now you could pick any color cardstock of your choice. And then I used the True Love Designer Series paper because it's just black and white. And so this is three by three. So since it's a, you know, a three by three, there's no waste by cutting a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock or designer paper. And then I colored my little, um, my little, uh, lamb. Now, funny thing is, is I was coloring the little um, flowers underneath of it. After I colored them, I'm like, why am I doing that? I really don't need to color them because 
you really can't see them. So all I did was colored the face on my little lamb. Now you can kind of mix and match and color this um, whatever color you would like to. But I colored the face um, with my petal light petal pink. They also make an ivory um, an ivory uh, uh, blend, but I've been kind of liking the petal pink for the, the flesh color here. So I just kind of colored that in with my light. And then I came back in with my dark and I just kind of made, this dark might be, let me get the other side. I need to replace a few of my blends. They're getting quite used. Just kind of put a little bit of rosy cheeks on it. And then I'm gonna share with you how I made this bow. Cause can you see the different detail in there? That's the pure magic of blending. Um, so thank you, Marilyn. I'm glad that you um, like the box. Now this little bow, I should tell you where that bow was from. This bow was from the Handsomely Suited, I think it's called stamp set. It's part of the masculine stamp set that is in um, the uh, January through June catalog. Um, it goes with the suit and all that kind of stuff. And so I just uh, stamped a couple of them and cut them out. And I'm going to show you how I colored this one. So if you're ever struggling with blends, blends can really make you look like you know what you're doing when it comes to coloring. And the, the I wanted the bow to kind of be my focal point. And so that's why I chose to kind of really make that stand out and do some um, really awesome coloring. So I chose to start with my light magenta madness. And I'm just going to color the entire bow with my light. Now, I know that you, you know, if any of you watch other demonstrators, I'm sure we all have different ways that work for us. And so I encourage you to kind of play with your blends and pick what works for you. Because I have tried many different ways and found the way that I'm going to be showing you to be the way that works best for me. So, um, and again, my way may not work best for you. So, um, you know, feel free to kind of play with them. The neat thing is, is they're not going to make you look like an awful coloring person because they make you, it looks so, so easy. So I start with my light color blend, whichever color I'm going to be working with. And I color the whole thing with the light color first. Then I'm going to come in with my dark and I'm just going to kind of go on top of all of these little lines right here. So I'm just going to kind of bring in some color on this and just going to kind of go on top of that. Okay. And then I'm going to bring my color lifter in and I'm going to kind of try to wash out some of the color on this, um, on top of the different, um, right in the middle is where I'm kind of concentrating. And I'm trying to wash out some of the color that I just laid on there to kind of make it look like it's a little bit um, variegated in different spots, okay? And then I even, I think, went over the whole thing just again to make it look kind of different. Now, once it dries and you see that color lifting, um, you'll see what I mean here on this. Now I'm going to go over it again. Again, it's just a matter of playing here with it, but I'm going to go over it again with some of the dark. And I'm just going to so it's just a matter of continuing to play with it. So I'm going to bring in my color lifter again and just going to do the same thing. I'm going to keep going on top of it, lifting some of that color in the different spots that I want it. And once this dries, I feel that that's when you really kind of get your true um, definition of, of how it looks once you kind of pull out some of that color. So you just kind of keep playing with it until you get it the way that you want it to look. Um, and I'm going to bring that in kind of close here so you can kind of see. Um, and it's actually still drying, so it's going to pull a little bit more of that color out. But that is how I did it. I just kind of kept going on top of it until I had color um, pulled and you had a little bit of that white showing through. So maybe I want a little bit more in this area and a little bit more in that area. So anyway, you kind of see and get the gist of how that works, right? It's kind of cool. Okay, and so then from there, what I did is I did fussy cut the little lamb. And I'm not going to take the time to do all that because you guys kind of get the idea. And then I just put the bow on with some dimensionals to kind of make it look like it had a great big bow, like a, a hair bow around around its head. Um, and, I, and again, I got the inspiration for this from, um, you know, seeing so many infant, newborn infant pictures where the, the babies, newborn baby girls have these awesome little bows around their head and they're so big. And so I thought that'd be kind of cute to put on the lamb. I didn't try to put one on the bunny, um, but I wonder if the 
the bunny might be a little bit too small. His head might be a little too narrow. Yeah, you kind of lose you kind of lose the bunny there. Um, but I loved it on the lamb, and so I thought I would share with you my idea on um, how I did that. Um, Marilyn, so the handsomely sweeted, everything is in stock except for the dyes. The dyes are slated, I think, to come in next week. So um, you can't get the dyes yet, but everything else is available, the stamp set, the paper, the ribbon, all of that. Um, but if you're interested in that, let me know and I'll keep an eye on it and can let you know when those dyes um, do indeed come in. So anyway, how cute is that? Again, these boxes fit so many different things. You could add um, little Hershey nuggets, um, all kinds of stuff to that. But I loved that the gum fit in there perfectly. So again, kudos to Kay for picking that up for me to have something to show you that would fit awesomely into that box. Okay, so while we're talking 3D projects, I'm going to continue with my third and final 3D projects before I get into my cards. And my last one is this awesome mini paper pumpkin box. Now, this paper pumpkin box is carrying over into our new catalog, I can tell you that. So this will still be available, but if you liked um, the mini pizza boxes or the little mini treat boxes, I would suggest ordering them ASAP because they're while supplies last. Um, they are on the retired list that came out yesterday. So I'm um, hi to Jerry and thank you, Janet and Lou Ann. I'm glad you like my project. This one has some awesome little Easter eggs in it. How cute. And they, again, you could fit so many different things in here. Candy, you could fit little hair bows, little hair ties, you know, different things to give to grandchildren um, for the Easter. And this one I chose to kind of decorate um, that way and make some grass for it. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. Um, so this box, again, comes um where you just have to simply fold it all up so you just fold in on all of these different um and the neat thing is with this box as well i should have mentioned with the pizza box if you fold it with the mat side out then it's food safe you could put um, cookies candy chocolate um that kind of stuff in here um so marilyn i'll keep an eye on that for you and definitely let you know when that when that bundle's available and i can hook you up with that one um and then this one's the same way so you have the matte finish or you have the um, inside that can, can you know have food um, stored in it. So I usually tend to find myself um, when it's going to have it's going to have food that's not individually packaged. I find myself tending to fold it in where I put the food safe area in the inside. So I again I'm not going to take the time to fold this up. It goes really quick and simple, and it folds up into a box. Okay, but I am going to tell you what I use to decorate that and the measurements for it. So I used a couple pieces of the designer series paper. Now this again is paper that's leaving. We always get new designer series paper in with every new catalog. So this pattern is leaving, but these are cut five by three and I did two of them and all I did was kind of alternate them like that on top of my pizza box. So I'm gonna leave my pizza box laying flat just so that I can um, decorate the front and or the cover and you guys can see that okay. So this is, this is the cover. Um, so all I did was layer them and you could pick which way you wanted them to go. I chose to do them this way. So that way I could have the grass kind of showing on it. So I'm just gonna adhere these together a little bit. And then I'm gonna put these at an angle like this. And then I adhered this whole thing onto my card box like that. And then I have a piece of the Just Jade cardstock. Now you could cut this any um, size that you want, but I chose to just have a little piece here that I can demonstrate. Um, and all I did, I don't know if those of you, if any of you have been with Stampin' Up! long enough when you remember that we used to have fringe scissors that would actually make this awesome fringe. But I'm just cutting my, taking my scissors and cutting little pieces into this cardstock. And some of them might be a little too wide, so let me make them a little bit narrower. The more narrow, the better looking grass you're going to have. And just going to finish this out because, again, I want it to be nice and narrow. So there you have some grass, all right? And then what I did is I kind of took my fingers and kind of just played with it a little bit to make some of it stand up, to make it look like it was more realistic because, you know, grass does not lay just flat. So 
So I think I still have the scissors too, Philomena. I really think I do. Now, what you would do if you were doing this, um, you know, for yourself, you would take your paper trimmer and you would cut this nice and straight. For purposes of my, my demonstration tonight, I'm just going to cut this the best I can to make it, oh, kind of, sort of, somewhat straight. Um, but you don't want to cut it, um, you don't want to cut the piece too close to where you have your fringe or else you're going to cut those right off. And then what I did is I just lined this up right down here on the bottom. And this right here is also three inches wide so that it fits across the whole, the whole bottom of this piece of blue. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive down to the bottom of that. And I'm going to put that right here like that. And like I said, if you were doing it, I'd cut that straight so you wouldn't have a little bit of that showing. And again, you're just going to kind of play with the grass and make it kind of stand up a little bit. I then used the Tasteful Labels dies and cut a purple shape. Just kind of felt the little lamb needed to be on something here. And so this was cut out with Highland Heather. And I'm just going to adhere that down as well. And that you want to kind of put behind the grass. And then again, I used the little lamb. I have one cut here in advance, but I'm not gonna, I don't wanna spend my whole time with you guys tonight coloring. But all I did was I colored the face the same way I did the previous box. And then for my blends, I used Highland Heather. I know actually, I think I used or, or, uh, Rich Raspberry here, but I probably should have used um, the um, Highland Heather. And then I used Shaded Spruce because uh, it was close to the Just Jade, and that's what I had handy. And then I used um, some of the, the blue, the balmy blue blends to kind of make it match. Um, and then Fussy cut this out and put it on there. Added a, li a little banner down to the bottom that says Welcome Spring. Now that is part of the stamp set. Let me bring the stamp set in to kind of show you guys that you have a good little Easter sentiment here, but you also have Welcome Spring. Um, so it can be used for many different things. It doesn't have to just be used for Easter. And you could even use um, any of your own stamps that you have for baby type stuff and make it a baby card as well or a baby box if you wanted to. And then I just cut a little banner into this. And then the Welcome Spring got put down here using a couple of dimensionals. And then I would just normally color that little, um, color that little uh, lamb and put that on there and then you'd have a cute little box that looks like that. And that awesome, I love it. So no one has commented on my nails yet tonight. I've kind of been waiting for that comment because I got them done again and usually someone's always right on the Johnny on the spot to notice. So I'm gonna actually show you guys my nails because they're kind of cool, but look at that one right there. Isn't that cool? So that's like a marble nail polish that he put on there and then he actually did that all by hand. Drew that little um, flower on there by hand. I love it. Love it. So I thought I would just make sure I showed you guys that because I'm sure you're probably noticing and wondering what that might be on my on my hand. Okay, so those are the three 3D projects that I wanted to share with you. Nothing fancy about these 3D projects. I really wanted to focus on the packaging that Stampin' Up! provides us because so many times I think we try to get you know creative with, you know, with scoring and seeing different boxes that people make. And I just wanted to kind of bring to your attention that Stampin' Up! does indeed provide some awesome um, packaging that you wouldn't have to do much with other than decorate it up and make it look really, really cute. Okay, so um, in this box, I'm not sure what I'm going to be putting in it because my granddaughter can't have gum, um, but I'll be putting something cute in there for her uh, for Easter, for her little Easter basket that we're doing because that I think is just too darling not to give to a cute little cute little girl. So hard to believe that my little granddaughter is almost going to be one. We are planning her one year old birthday party already. Um, April 14th is her birthday, so April 11th. We are plan I'm having her birthday party, and I just can't believe it. It's gone so, so fast. Okay, so now I'm going to share with you a few of my Easter cards that I created. Um, again, using this awesome stamp set. I really like the stamp set paired with the Hydrangea Hill Designer Series paper. Now, this paper is also retiring. Um, so, oh, Oreos would be a good one to put in there, Courtney. Yeah, it would be. Um, this paper is retiring, so if you like it, I suggest that you um, add an extra package to your order um, so that you have enough to keep creating with it for all of spring. Um, and then this one, I really like the Highland Heather paired with the 
gorgeous grape. I think the two of those look really well together. And um, just, I don't know, I just love them together. So I'm going to fold my Highland Heather in half. This is the um, base of my card. And then I have a piece of that um, uh, gorgeous grape that's cut five by three and three fourths. So it's a little bit smaller piece so that I have more of the um, Highland Heather showing around it. And then I am just going to adhere, let me bring that out of the way. I'm going to adhere a piece of the designer series paper to this end using some of my stamp and seal. And this you could kind of have any size that you want. I believe this one is two inches. So it'd be two inches by three and a half. And then we have the little lamb the same way stamped using the, um, uh, this is these I've colored in advance to save a little bit of time on my video with you guys tonight. So this is stamped using Memento Black Ink, and then again I use the same colors of blends, and then I used the um, Gorgeous Grape Ink to stamp the Welcome Spring down there. And I'm just going to adhere this down to the other side, and I'm leaving a little bit of a layering mat around there. So these two are going to overlap right here, but that's okay because we are going to cover it up with some of this awesome, gorgeous grape ribbon. And I'm excited to tell you that this gorgeous grape ribbon is not retiring. It is carrying over into our new catalog. And I'm so excited. This ribbon is gorgeous and it was unavailable for quite some time. And um, I'm just happy that it's around. So um, again, I cut my ribbon about a little bit, about a half of an inch bigger and wider than the, my uh, mat here. And I put a glue dot on there and I just wrap them around. Thank you, Philomena. Again, most of you who watch me know my little cheating methods. No one's gonna see the back of that to know that I didn't go all the way around. And then I'm just gonna come, tie a little piece on here, underneath here in the middle like that and then from there I'm just going to trim off my tails a little bit and that will then get adhered to my card base quick and simple card this one is a very easy duplicatable card and um and again that's kind of my goal because there's still time if you um there's still time for you to order these prod prod um products to be able to make your Easter cards. You'd have to do it fast because Easter, as you know, is in like a week and a half, um, but it's still doable. Okay. So there you have a quick and simple Easter card. Now these little um, pastel pearls were on back order for the longest time as well, but they are now available and I love these pearls. So I'm just going to kind of add a couple of these pearls to the card and you'll see this kind of come to life here and just add whatever colors that you might want on it and there you have a beautiful quick simple easter card so if you didn't want the welcome spring you could also stamp the easter you'd need to move this up a little bit and make additional room for the um, easter um, sentiment but it would be able to be done so easy and cute and simple okay my next card that I'm gonna share with you uses the little bunny. And I love these colors together. I wasn't sure um, when I first created this card and, and then I fell in love with it. So um, this one, um, thank you guys. Thanks to Kathy and Beth and Susie, I'm glad you like it. So when I created this card, I was trying to come up with a color that would look um, different than always just using the purple. And I wanted something, so you can see here that I did incorporate, I'm trying to remember which stamp set this is, I did make this one into a baby card, just to show you the versatility. Um, you could also change this into like a light, a light blue and a green and make it for like a little boy if you wanted to. You may wanna cover up the little flowers there, but you could easily make this into a baby card. And this is one of my most favorite embossing folders ever, and I'm so glad it's gonna still be around. This is the Ornate Floral Embossing Folder, and I love this one. It just looks so, so pretty. And, um, oh, this piece of cardstock's a little too big. I need to find my trimmer. So anyway, I cut one a little too big, so we're gonna cut this down here in just a minute. All right, so this is supposed to have been five and a quarter by four. So um, we're just going to cut it down a little bit. So five and a quarter by four is the size for um, my first layer. And then my second one is 
five by, um, so five and a quarter by four, and then five by three and three fourths. And I'm just gonna layer those two together. Yeah, this embossing folder is gorgeous on so many cards. Um, like I said, I'm using it here on a baby card. It'd be great for, you know, birthday, for sympathy, so, so many things. Now, these layering ovals are going away. So, um, these are these stitched shapes. Um, the stitched shapes are going away as as, as well um, as the um, layering ovals and the layering squares. So I wouldn't delay if you decide that you want to get your hands on these dies and you don't yet um, because they're while supplies last. And you can see there that I've added a little bit of color to the bunny using, again, the exact same two colors, using that coordination because that is what we do with Stampin' Up! We have all that color coordination that matches things perfectly. And then I'm going to put that on with a few dimensionals here. And you can tell that I or see that I haven't adhered this down to the card base yet because we're going to add some ribbon. And then using the double oval punch um, in advance, I have this little welcome little one. And I forget which stamp set that's from. So I'll have to find that if any of you are interested in knowing which one that is. I thought I would remember, but obviously I don't remember. Um, and I stamped the little greeting with the um, C or the uh, Seaside Spray ink. And then I put some of this white ribbon around it. So, oh, I should have done that first. The joy of being able to bring that up. Um, oh, I remember which stamp set. It is the Oval Occasions stamp set. So Oval Occasions is the stamp set that I do have it, did have it here. Um, welcome little one, Oval Occasions. So it's the stamp set that coordinates with that double oval punch. Woohoo! Okay, so I needed to put ribbon on here first. Again, we're just going to cut a little piece big enough to go around. So I'm just going to add some glue dots to this. And this is the white crinkle ribbon, which I love this ribbon. It's a little bit of a pain in the winter time when it's really um, dry because the humidity makes it kind of stick to everything. But it's such a, a lightweight, simple ribbon to use. I really do like it. And so I'm just going to wrap this around here like I normally do with my bows or my ribbons, I should say. And then I'm going to trim these down. And my scissors are nice and sharp again. Woohoo! We, um, at my event, I had a, the, or we have a guy that does um, scissor sharpening, and he came to our, my event, and um, I now have awesome um, sharp scissors. So there, we're going to do that. And then I also added a little bow up here to the top um, with the same uh, Whisper White uh, ribbon. And then I adhered this down to a Whisper White layer here that is my card base. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some adhesive onto that and whip that on here like that. And then I would just add a little bow here. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to take the time to make a little bow. You kind of see how quick and simple that card was to put together. Isn't that cute? Okay, so my next card that I'm going to share with you, this is one that um, is great for Easter. And I think I'm going to need to get a piece of the Highland Heather cardstock for this one. Just bear with me here. Okay, so this is the card that I'm going to be making for you. Five and a quarter by four. <laughs> All right, sorry, I'm missing a little piece of my card. So this is the um, the card that I'm going to be making, and this is the Rococo Rose cardstock that is retiring. And then I have a layer of the um, Rococo Rose, and I did the exact same thing that I did on my last card. So you can see here that this card mimics and looks a whole lot like this card, just different cardstock and different um, ran the opposite way. And this time I actually cut out the little the little lamb and did a little bit more coloring to him. Isn't that cool? Okay, so let's get that card made and you'll see how easy that one is to put together. So I'm going to use my Rococo Rose and I'm going to fold it in half. And then, oops, let me bring the card back in so you guys can see the card. There we go. Sorry, I've been a little bit high on you guys so you haven't been able to see a couple of things. Okay, 
And then I'm going to use my um, five and a quarter by four piece of the, um, the Highland Heather, but I'm gonna adhere the piece of designer series paper down first, um, followed by the little piece that has my little stamped greeting on it. Easter is a lovely reminder of new beginnings. So we're just gonna adhere this down like that. And then this one's gonna go down here on the bottom. And I always try when I'm hearing those pieces down to make sure I have a good little border around the edge. And then I'm just gonna use the same ribbon and go here in the middle and kind of get, bridge the little gap there. And my glue dots again, which I need to rip off that tail. This is gonna go around the middle of it. This is gonna get adhered down then to my card base. And then I'm gonna cut a little piece to go underneath of here. Again, quick and simple, very easy to duplicate. It's my whole goal because you know Easter is gonna be right around the corner, so that way if you decide to make some of these cards, um, you still have time to uh, um, get everything and make them because they're not too, too complicated. And then um, I have my little bunny here, or my little bunny, my little lamb, we just cut out and adhere that down with some dimensionals. Added a couple of those same little pearls, um, some pearls here to that card, and then you have the finished card. Okay, so my last project, and I'm doing really good on time, and this is probably one of my favorite cards, well, one of my favorite cards that I'm sharing with you guys tonight, is this one right here. Now, on my card, though, I don't have, I used up all of my, um, this is part of the snailed, um, but the snail it, or the snailed it bundle that I featured last week. Now, I will tell you, if any of you liked my snailed it projects from last week, I do have about three card kits left um, using the snailed it. So, if anyone's interested in, in cards using the snailed it bundle, um, let me know, and I'd be happy to send you a private message with more information. But I used all of that twine in my class for that. So um, the sample that we're going to make, I'm just going to go ahead and use some of the white ribbon. The neat little thing that you can do is, is change things out to make it match. I'm starting with a piece of the Whisper White. This is my card base. And then this right here is part of the Stitched So Sweetly um, dies. And I love this one. These are also carrying over. Um, and then I cut a piece of the Rococo Rose cardstock just a little bit bigger um, to fit onto this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere those two together. And then I cut a piece of um, designer series paper from the um, Hydrangea Hill. So the Hydrangea Hill has a lot of, um, oh yeah, Courtney, Wink of Stella would look really nice on the headband. You are absolutely right. Great idea. Sure would. Um, so this is part of the Hydrangea Hill Designer Series paper, but I chose to use the um, the more pink side, the Rococo Rose side. And so I'm just going to put a little bit down here on the bottom. Again, just wanted to add a little bit of color. Um, cut it just a little bit shorter so you it wouldn't um, cover up the stitched edging of that stitch so sweetly die. And then using my layering um, circles, I layered two circles together. And again, this is where one of the, well, the color coordination comes out because again, I used the colors that are of the cardstock that I used. So I used the Rococo Rose light and dark to color the little headband in there. Um, and this is just gonna get adhered together. And then this whole thing went down with some dimensionals. Let me bring those in here. So I'll just do a couple on it. And that went down up here in the middle. Isn't that cute? I just love this card. And then what I did for the ribbon, I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive right down there. So I did the baker's twine, but we're gonna do it with the white ribbon because I'm all out, literally all out of that baker's twine. And since my classes are already cut and prepped and ready, I didn't wanna to have to buy more. I thought we would just improvise. So I'm just gonna kind of do my little um, cheating. I call this the Z pattern with ribbon or with any kind of, um, uh, um, baker's twine. So just going to kind of do the little Z pattern back and forth there. 
And then I'm just gonna cut this off. And then I put my little Welcome Spring. I stamped this with the Memento Black ink. And I'm just gonna cut the ends of this off. Nothing fancy. And I'm gonna put a couple of um, dimensionals on the back of that. And that's gonna go right in the middle on the center of where that ribbon is so that you can. I know it doesn't probably look quite as nice as the um, as the, the um, linen thread, but you get the idea. It still kind of looks nice. And then I topped it off with one of the pink pearls um, right in the little bunny's hands, right in the center there. Isn't that cute? All right, so those are my Easter projects that I had to share with you this evening. Let me bring them all in again so you can kind of take a, a peek um, at all of them. So we did four different cards. Again, if you, my ordering promotion is any order of $30 minimum placed now through Sunday. Um, you will get five Easter cards um, in the mail for you. And I'm prepared to get them out ASAP so you'd have them in time for Easter. Um, and then I also shared with you some cute little 3D projects um, using Stampin' Up! packaging so that you don't have to worry about cutting anything. Um, you could easily whip these projects together and have them ready in time for Easter, and no one would even know that you did them last minute. So thank you all so very much for joining me this evening. I hope you've enjoyed my projects using the Springtime Joy stamp set. Again, this stamp set is only $20. So if you don't have it yet, encourage you to get it. There's still time to do lots of great designing with it. Um, and um, if you have any questions about anything that I showcase tonight, um, feel free to send me a message. I'd be happy to answer you. And I will be back next week. What I'll be show showcasing next week is the ice cream corner bundle. And I cannot wait to show that one with you, to share that one with you guys. I've got some awesome cards and some awesome 3D projects already in the, in the works um, to share with you next week. So thanks everyone for joining me this evening. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night and weekend and we'll see you back here soon.